Magic brew. <laughs> That's the good stuff. Just driving through Italy in any little town, they always had something growing. There was no lawns. Guten gardening, everybody. Well, we are taking a couple of week vacation here. I actually mentioned it in one of my recent videos. And one of the things we wanted to do on our vacation was as we're driving through different parts of the country and I am doing a driving vacation, we want to check out some of the different garden spaces out there. Maybe look at some of the creativity along the way of some of the gardeners that we find along the way. And so right now I'm in Maryland. It's about 800 miles south and mostly east of where we typically are in zone five in Wisconsin. And I can tell you for a fact right now, the weather couldn't be more different than what we've been experiencing while we're in Wisconsin, but we'll get to that in a little bit. It's an area where actually I grew up. And so I'm gonna show you a garden from a gardener here. I'm gonna meet them for the first time today and I'm gonna show you their garden. And as we drove by it, I can tell you it's magnificent and they've been gardening for quite a few years. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that garden. Start with the cold frame and tell me about why you decided to, to, to create this because you built it yourself. So why did you decide to to build this in the first place? Um, because I didn't have uh, hardly anything here. I didn't have the greenhouse um, and I wanted a place to harden off my plants that, that would start inside and I'd take up a uh, room either in our back porch or down in the basement. Sure. The, the grow lights, you know. And, so you have, do you still do stuff inside? Yeah. Yeah, we, do, we have the same thing. We have the grow lights inside and that's where we start our seedlings too. So you said that you do some spinach in here. I'll put some uh, uh, cold hardy greens in, like probably, I don't know, maybe around October, end of September. Okay. And close it up and keep an eye on it. And we usually have spinach or greens. I like, I just say Christmas spinach because I'll have it in the winter. This is zone six? Zone six. Oh, I thought it was zone seven. So, uh, six B and okay. or yeah 6b and i think they were talking about changing this area to like 6a give us five years right this will probably be zone nine right <laughs> well it feels like zone nine here right now so what do you so is this your pollinator area here like your pollinator is, garden uh, my wife's uh native garden yeah so these are all maryland natives um and i used to plant here before i got the beds but it was too shady yeah that's one of the challenges my aunt is dealing with is she's got so much shade she can't get anything to well i've got these trees here now in the summer the sun uh east and west is almost like this so it's, it's summer, spot on so plenty good. of full sun yeah but as it gets into fall and everything then it gets blocked out pretty early there's a nice pear tree here is, is that a... that's a pear tree and uh, another one there they were here when i got here they were like <laughs> that big when i got here and they're still going <laughs> my wife said they're they're not going to last too long. <laughs> well, but then they did. They might last longer. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. So I've got something similar to this setup here. Um, was it, these are beans you got in here? Uh, lima beans. So lima beans. So I have this piece. Um, it's a little bit, a little bit narrower, but but not much. And I got that from a friend of mine, and we used it to create. Is he built it for tomato cages, but we, we used it to create a vertical garden. So I wrapped it in black plastic and added a bunch of hay down the inside of it. Ah, okay. And so it's a little bit of a pain to harvest, but I grow sweet potatoes and potatoes in there. It's a little bit of a pain to harvest because I end up having to unwrap it and then I'll pull it up out of the ground. So that's not ideal. I mean, this is a little bit better for it, but it's a fun little... Well, Easy I had vertical to put, garden. put this on because last year, I, I just tried the, this last year with the beans. Okay. And they all got eaten. I got, I have groundhog. Problems. Groundhogs? Yeah. So that's why I put the chicken wire and they did good this year. So they're surviving a little bit, even getting some little. Uh, yeah, I see them. Going. Yeah, I see them. There's the flowers right up in here too. Oh yeah. So we do, we have some groundhogs. Our big thing, uh, raccoons. Mm. Uh, which has destroyed my corn in the past. That's painful. And uh, voles. Little... I used to have voles. Oh, more. man. Well, it, I they... think the neighbor has like six cats, so hopefully... That's what... If, we, if only. If only. <laughs> if only. You can only talk to do it, right? But... Beautiful zucchini. And you can see the groundhog's got the flowers. Yep. That sounds about right. Yep. 
Have you ever eaten the flowers? No. The groundhogs say they're good. <laughs> they, they say they're, they're supposed to be fried. <laughs> the beautiful corn. Hopefully. I've had terrible luck with corn over the years. I've tried it in the beds. I've had it out here. And we get some wind. So, yep. I'm just hoping. We usually come right down here, like from the north or northwest. We, we have a community garden spot. That's where we grow all of our corn because we've had horrible luck at home. Horrible luck with corn. And right about the time it's about a foot taller than this is when we'll get a big windstorm and knock everything right down. One thing I'm trying, I don't know, give me your opinion. Since uh, corn needs nitrogen, I, put, I had some peas left over. So I just stuck peas in between uh, the corn. Hopefully for nitrogen fixing, I don't know if it's gonna work. I just play around. I just experiment with myself or with this stuff. Well, my understanding is, and I don't know if I'm right, but my understanding is that the next season in particular is where that really will come in. Come in, in handy. Yeah, because the the that's roots and everything else that you leave in there. <laughs> Hoping the rain will wash it in. The, we use the same thing. So that's our big thing is blood meal. Or we use, sometimes we use the um, fish emulsion if we want something in okay. there really quickly. Mm -hmm. Liquid. So. Now, I've been... Uh, Last was it last year? I was uh, looking into the, to that Jadam. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So and with uh, Garden like a Viking, you know, he's making fish essence type of stuff. But I haven't got into that because I haven't had time to go fishing. Is that beets in between your pe uh, your uh, beans uh, there? That'll be uh, Swiss chard. Oh, it's chard. Uh, okay, yeah, it looks yeah. pretty similar. But I see that. Let's put that in. That's uh, ground cherry. I'm just trying them this year. What kind of tomatoes you got over here? It looks like uh, I've got some. Um, this is the first one is an Australia one I got from a friend. These are all for uh, sauces or? Well, actually this year, yeah, uh, we're, I'm going to have to make some sauce, but I may not have enough. And if I don't, I'll just, we live in a farm community. I'll just get up. Yeah, it's kind of hard tomatoes, to find some. You know, and get true. it all done at once. That's true. So a lot of times I, I just, this year I'm growing them for seed. Yeah. So this is an Australian one. Um, Amish paste. Yep. This is oh, this is a green, green tomato. And they actually same thing last year and the year before. This is probably the toughest plant compared to all the other. The red ones seem wimpy, but the green Look one. Look at how dark green the foliage is yeah. even compared to everything else. The stems are huge. Gotta throw some basil in there. There's another Amish paste. Mm-hmm. Uh, these two are mm. from uh, Bulgarian that I got from uh, another friend. And this one's a Cherokee purple. And you're trying to keep the birds away? Yeah, I did that. Yeah. It seems to be pretty effective. Um, Makes a little noise in well, the wind. I and think shiny. the blueberries are more effective. Yeah? Yeah, yeah when, they, when they, they eat the blueberries, <laughs> they'll leave everything else alone. Peppers. Oh, it's eating you. Oh, yeah. I... This spring, we had some nice weather early. Yeah. And I got impatient. Okay. So I put these in too too soon. And they're they're stressed, they're stunted. And actually some of these, this is a Saya. No, that one's not. Um, a lot of these are Hungarian paprika. Okay. And I just wanted to try them. It's not that I eat a lot of paprika. I just wanted to see if I could. Well, yeah, let's try, try something different. Yeah. These are uh, uh, blackberries, black raspberries. I picked a bunch of them. These are what's left. Yeah, yeah. what's left there doesn't the one. The red's up here, but the, the bed's going bad. So I'm just keeping this bunch, and then I'm going to clear that out. And you see a bee up there in your sunflower. Yeah. Look at that. I like the red ones. That's the first honeybee I've seen this year. Really? Mm -hmm. It's sad. You ever, been, you ever thought about having bees back here? Uh, I used to keep bees up in Flintstone. Okay. And so, yeah, I need something else to do. Right? <laughs> not like you're doing anything <laughs> Right, else. right. I was even considering chickens, you know, just turning that into a chicken run. But it's like, okay, I'm 77 years old. How much of this do I want to keep doing? I'd love to have some bees. I would too, but it's, it's a lot upkeep. Of work. Yeah, I was going to say. I've been talking about the blueberries. You come over and look at them. Wow. So we bought 10 blueberry bushes, I want to say, probably seven years ago. Uh -huh. I thought I had it all figured out. We planted them in one year and they were all dead. Grapes are losing battle with me. I had uh, different kinds, but these are just conquerors. 
Concord. And we get uh, the powdery mildew. And I've made up that sulfur spray from Jadam, and I tried that last year, and I have to hit them again here. Uh, this is the first year that they have grown this far over the trellis. Over the cattle panel? Before, yeah. I had it set up like they do in wine country, which is sure. really stupid, <laughs> because that was my idea. I want to make wine. But yeah, I like that. And you, you don't get very many grapes, and it's... A bird's nest there? Yeah. Yeah. Cardinal in there. You know what? So we got three or four different varieties of grapes, but we never, and we have one, uh, it's like a, a white gazebo, not gazebo, white, just straight up and across and down. Yeah. It's just one of those that we bought. And what we've done a bad job with is keeping it to the three or four stems and then, you know, pruning everything back. And right. so. So we'll have problems with, um, we don't have, the powder mildew affects everything else, but hasn't really impacted our grapes. But of course you don't get as many nice quality grapes if you don't cut it back. And so um, I got to do a better job with that. Yeah. And you know, people are, well, I don't say that, but uh, some people might be afraid of cutting it or pruning too much, but but you grapes, just go to town. You can go through ninety percent of the them. amount of growth that comes yeah. out each year. <laughs> the number of yeah. feet is yeah. insane. Well, we didn't set anything up the way we should have when we planted them, and again, that's part of the learning experience. Um, we got a couple growing up. I just built some lattice work stuff near our house, but now they've grown up so tall that I can't even access half of them without uh -huh. a ladder. So I got to go through and really destroy them yeah. <laughs> if you will just yeah. cut them back we've had a couple years where the rabbits came along and tried to eat at the bottom over the winter but even that's not a huge problem because again you just cut them back cut them back cut them back oh nice raised beds yeah i had the, um over there i had the, the little six inch boards and i had the same thing here i think uh went up maybe 12 inches and i just wanted to to do these because it's like working in your kitchen counter you know i don't have to, you bend, have to over. bend over so far uh, yeah. groundhogs don't bother it what kind are these this is a uh, birdie a birdie, birdie okay yeah From and what'd you fill what'd you fill the bottom part with logs logs and then yeah grass all clippings all wood, stuff wood trash leaves beautiful beets in here that one popped out almost yeah, yeah you do yeah, look at those. Yeah, we've been eating them. Eat the greens off of them. Is it nasturtiums? They look like nasturtiums, don't they? Yeah, that's nasturtium. Yeah. And then I threw in the, the cucumbers. I've got uh, two Asian and mm -hmm. uh, two of the like straight eight or whatever. Yeah, I'm growing some straight eights this year. And these are turnips. Yeah, no bulbs on them yet. But no, 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 not yet. Carrots. And this is some, this is some spinach in here, and then I have some uh, Japanese turnips there. So the, the white ones. The white yeah. Ones. Oh, this irrigation system, is this something that comes with it, or you built this? Oh, no, no, no. I put this when I had the other beds in. So I ran a couple lines down to, and they're not real deep. So okay. So I've got to open it up and flush it before winter and stuff like that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So the setup here is... The PVC coming into what is this? You have a, these all along it. This yeah, little tube. Yeah, these okay. are the the drip lines. Okay. So and I put them about every foot. That's really nice. And so I've got to dig a trench to this one because this bed came in afterwards. Okay. And oh, I see. I'll probably just run one up here if I can hit this line. Oh, and you just hold it down with garden staples and keep yeah. it in place yeah. where you want it. Uh, that irrigation system is something I'd love to have. The onions are looking pretty nice. You know, I hope they're falling over. I've tried, this is companion planting with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, Do you plant them from seed or from... Oh yeah, yeah. I start them in seed inside. It's a um, mulatto that? pepper. That's a pepper? Yeah, and it's a hot pepper. Can I try it? Sure. How hot is it? I don't know. <laughs> you don't pretty know? Hot. It it's looks like a baby. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Let's find out. Yeah. I think it's uh, like Caribbean or uh, 
South American something like that. Yeah, it's spicy. Uh -huh. That's nice. You want that? Save the seeds, or I can save you some seeds later. I'll save some seeds from this. Thank you. Right. So you got a little bit of everything in this one, huh? The, yeah, I wanted to try, since it was sticking in with the uh, onions, uh, the baby bells. Mm-hmm. But again, I put them in too early. This is another companion planting thing I wanted to try, but all the onions kind of bent over, you know, they just get it's kind of rough. So we'll see. I like this, the insect barrier. Yeah. I had that last year for my uh, broccoli uh, and Brussels sprouts. Saves them from the, you have a, a big problem with uh, loopers or cabbage? Yeah. I'm getting some beans there. I'm, oh, I'm trying, these are uh, New England beans. I think this is like a soldier. The mm -hmm. other one is Vermont cranberry. None of there. Because I want to get some dry. Yeah. Because uh, start eating beans. There you go. You got, you got a couple down in there. Mm-hmm. And I think they say plant them four inches apart, but that's it's like, are these bushes or are these packed. vines? Well, that's the thing. You're about, you know, about two feet tall already. <laughs> Maybe more. Yeah, yeah. So it's either, <laughs> what bush is this? Well, and this one over there is supposed to be a, a bush bean too. But oh, no. That's not a bush bean. No. I've seen some bush beans. So now they, now, <laughs> yeah, now I'm trying to get it out of there. Yeah, but I'm just... <laughs> They're just gonna go because I want them to dry out anyway. Sure. I just want the beans. Celery, beautiful. Okay. Yep. And this is a red celery. I was gonna say, I thought I saw a little difference here. Yeah. Oh, I think it really, does yours keep that thin, stay that thin? You know, a lot of times it does, but I don't harvest celery the way most people do. I usually just pull it off a stalk at a one time. One at a time, yeah. Let it keep growing. So I don't know if there's a type of, I don't know if there's a different type that I should be growing if I wanted to harvest the whole thing. I that, think it's probably just pour nutrients in the soil and get yeah. enough water. I mean, this one's pretty, this one's got some nice stalks to yeah. it. So, your potatoes. Potatoes, yep. They've already flowered? Yeah, they've already flowered and something came along and ate the flowers, so. Same, I've noticed that of late. Mm -hmm. A lot of just the flowers just disappear. The flowers are going, probably which, deer or something. I don't think it really matters that much. I mean, one of the things that they say is that it's supposed to make the tubers the bigger, flowers. but well, we've done that and haven't noticed a difference, so okay. that's only a one-time deal. This is the broccoli, cauliflower? Uh, yeah. So, and I had to start the broccoli because of the loopers. Yeah. So I just put them in and yeah. let's see what we get. And I put in some uh, uh, Chinese broccoli in between because we really like that. that plant. What yeah. kind of potatoes you grow? Um, Eve, Eva? A russet mm -hmm. and a yellow. It wasn't a, a Yukon, but it, it was a yellow potato. I'd say potatoes and sweet potatoes are our two favorite things to grow. Potatoes, we got 15 or 16 different varieties this year. Really? I got one bed in particular, it's 32 feet long, and I took three three potatoes you of each variety it? per. So you d you don't have any space in the back, or you just decided this was the it's space? It's wood. That's, that's two acres. Okay. Okay, so I figure give an acre back and I'll just work on the other one. So I let the critters have the back. But I, I like the front garden and I think a lot of people don't use the front yard space for gardening because um, they like that. They like the, well, we got soul on the lawn and yeah. nice, clean, sterile look. I went to uh, Europe mm -hmm. with my one grandson when he was in the eighth grade. It was like, we need some uh, chaperones. Yeah. So they had like eight kids and 40 chaperones. Because <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't want to go? Right, yeah. <laughs> but just driving through Italy and any little town, they always had something growing. There was no lawns yeah. to speak of. They are either growing olive trees or tomatoes or anything, grapes. And I figured, all right, why? The yard's got to take, I don't want to just take care of the yard and, right. and that's it. I'd like to be reciprocated. Once you start, once you start planting something and you start growing something and start eating something from your yard, then it just feels like a waste for any space that you can't do. Dude, that. Right, right. <laughs> this is a pear. Yeah. Yeah. I just do a little espalier or whatever, but you spread it out. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So I wouldn't recognize that as a pear if it weren't for the leaves. I wouldn't recognize it based on how you have it laid out. That's super cool. <laughs> well, it needs trimming. It looks. It's yeah, but like a candelabra. What's this? This is an apple. Apple, tree apple? yeah. Apple, 
but still the same basic principle. Got yeah. it all spread out. Uh, asparagus. Oh, that's oh yeah, it is asparagus. Of course it is. And then uh, I'm just, just all going to see it. Yeah, some tomatoes in there. I just planted a comfrey. I started comfrey this year because it's supposed to be good for. It. Someone just suggested we try comfrey as well. Um, so I'm going to try it because it's very good in nitrogen and has deep roots. Bring yeah. Stuff up. So yeah. I put some by the grapes. Nice um, tap root to it. But people, there's, apparently there's two kinds because it can be invasive if the flowers go to seed or if you cut the root, break the root up, root up and don't get it, it all spreads. out. spreads. Yeah. Basil? Yeah, I had them in a stands at the, up in my kitchen garden. Sure. But going to seed a little bit. I don't bit. like them in pots because they dry out too quick. So I'm going to plant them. Stress them and goes to seed and little sweet potatoes. Magic brew. <laughs> <laughs> That's the good stuff. So, and then I'll strain it and put it in. Uh, and this is the recipe you got from. Uh, yeah, it's just whatever I have goes in there. You yeah. know, with like weeds or something like like sure. this. <laughs> yeah. And they just go in. Yeah. And I'll get some. Uh, you ever uh, tested chicken it? manure from? I've been putting it around. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, you yeah. still got plenty of slips. Yeah. A little herb garden here? Yeah. Very nice. How many years in are you, is your asparagus? It's, it should be better than it is. I think it was like 2008. <laughs> so yeah. plenty of years in. You sage. see sage? Um, there's some tarragon. <clears throat> My daughter planted uh, yeah. a herb, the vertical garden, and the tarragon's the only thing. We planted from seed instead of starting it indoors, and the tarragon didn't come up at all. Which I, I got the sad about. sorrel and then French sorrel. And I think this is like, I do some Asian cooking, you know, like Thai stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is actually, it's got a little uh, celery, like lemon, instead of like a lemongrass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. It is good. That's, that's surprisingly delicious. That tastes like, you, what, what's it called? This is French sorrel. This is a uh, common sorrel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That tastes like a fruit. Like the tartness of a fruit. Mm -hmm. Fennel. Yeah, there it is. That's what I thought it was. You and this was that? for her uh, mm. for her butterflies. This was like licorice. What's this? It's a uh, seckle. Seckle pears or sugar pears. They, they, they're they, pretty small or? Yeah, they'll, they'll stay small. But they're very sweet. And they're not ready yet. And this, I've never seen it produce this many. It's loaded. It is. So I'm thinking, okay, they know something I don't. Yeah. You know, what's going to happen next year? Well, I'm recording the end of this video back home. You'll see it's a longer video. What a great way to start off this series. And I can tell you, we've already done our trip over 4,000 miles. And we saw so many awesome gardens. You're going to have some really great content coming from our trip. But what a perfect way to start this series of looking at other people's gardens. I mentioned at the beginning, I'd never met this gentleman before in my life. He'd been gardening for over 40 years. And it felt like I had known him for about half of those. <laughs> he was fantastic to talk to incredibly knowledgeable i love hearing from other people love seeing their experiences what's working for them where they struggle where they're finding success and i absolutely loved spending time in his garden space and i hope you enjoyed it too if you enjoy getting to know this gardener why don't you go ahead and leave that comment in the description so that he knows it because i'm sure he'll be able to see this video and i will say personally i really really appreciated meeting him Folks, if you enjoyed today's video and found it interesting, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.